Hi, this is Craig Dalger with Pro Like Gear, and I can think of no other term used in the outdoor industry that's as uh, misunderstood, misused, and misleading as the term breathability when used in the context of waterproof, breathable fabrics, fabrics that breathe, uh, jacket breathability, etc. Um, I think the disconnect stems from what a consumer associates with that word breathability relative to what the industry uh, means by that word breathability. And I'll, I'll explain you know, why I say that. Uh, first of all, the industry doesn't have a universally accepted definition for the word breathable. What the consumer thinks of when they think of the word breathing or breathability is you know, the dictionary definition of uh, when a mammal inhales uh, air into its lungs and exhales air out of its lungs, they call it breathing or respiration. And of course, fish do it with gills, but we'll leave fish out of this for the moment. Um, what the industry means is what Gore-Tex established the meaning to be back in the late 70s. So back in the late 70s, um, when W. L. Gore and Associates uh, came up with this uh, membrane that they later that they later called um, uh, Gore-Tex, uh, you know, it was a semi-porous membrane that, when it was bonded to a face fabric and a lining fabric and coated with some polyurethane so that uh, body oils and suntan lotion etc wouldn't foul that membrane. The result was a membrane uh, that had holes that were small enough to prevent water from getting through the membrane but large enough to allow water vapor to transport through that membrane. So the sales and marketing department had a challenge on their hands at Gore-Tex. How do they communicate this highly complex process uh, that involves all sorts of big words and lengthy uh, 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 descriptions and definitions in, a, in just a short, simple way that they can put on a product's hang tag to uh, assign uh, some sort of uh, product advantage or market advantage to their products. And so they came up with the word waterproof, breathable fabrics. And what they meant by that is they, those products allowed moisture vapor to be transported through them and once again I think the disconnect is that the consumer when they hear the word breathable is thinking some sort of respiratory process meaning the, the movement of air through the fabric so it was a brilliant uh, move by the sales and marketing department at Gore-Tex to use that uh, uh, word in the context of their fabric um, and just kind of uh, defined it as something that it wasn't uh, and that's where I think it's misleading is that uh, you know, like I said the average consumer is going to think it has to do with air movement where it has nothing to do with air movement and so fast forward over 30 years and you're still seeing uh, magazines uh, write articles where they're talking about jacket breathability or fabric breathability and gear blogs and gear review websites talking about fabric breathability and jacket breathability and the problem is, is that they never define what is meant by the word breathability. So, um, you know, and some gear review blogs are now assigning a numerical value to breathability, saying jacket A scores a 7 on breathability and jacket B scores a 5 on breathability. Once again, without defining what they mean by the word breathable, how they derive that value, or publishing, you know, their test method or their test data to show how they quantified that uh, that uh, performance standard. Um, where I think this gets increasingly interesting and where I think the whole moisture vapor transfer rate, uh, which is MVTR, uh, further comes into question is that there's at least 30 different ways to calculate moisture vapor transfer rate or how fast water vapor moves or, or moisture vapor moves through these membranes. And there's no universally accepted um, standard way for calculating that. So as a result, textile companies and brands that make these breathable fabrics use the method that makes their product look best compared to the competition. We saw the same thing happen in the outdoor industry with sleeping bag comfort ratings where you know certain labs would use one way to calculate that, another lab would use a different way to calculate it. So the sleeping bag, many of the sleeping bag companies would use the lab that gave them the best comfort rating. Uh, to try and achieve an advantage in the market. So at Pro Light Gear we have the challenge of deciding do we dumb this down and just talk about breathability or do we kind of take the more difficult road and try and say 
you know, what is meant by breathability and, uh, you know, talk about air permeability versus breathability or moisture vapor transport. We still have customers coming in the store and calling us on the phone saying, hey, I want a breathable jacket. And the easy way out would just to be, you know, not get into the whole 20 minute long conversation on breathability and just say, okay, here, let, let's take you into this product. But I think it's important to educate consumers. And uh, so when you read these different reviews where they're talking about breathability, you know, you can question what do they mean by the word breathability and hopefully these blogs and magazine articles will start defining what they mean by the word breathability. I feel that uh, air permeability is a much better test than moisture vapor transport. The reason I feel that is that uh, I think air permeability is going to give you a much better indication of how that jacket is going to perform for you in the field. Um, moisture vapor transport you're still kind of guessing on how that's going to perform. But uh, I've conducted moisture vapor transport tests using numerous different methods, saucer, inverted saucer, hot plate, a sweaty mannequin, etc. My preferred way to do it is just to use a commercial steam machine and condense the steam in a glass pint glass. And I'll, I'll do a cutaway shot so you can see what I'm talking about. The reason I feel that air permeability is a much better test than moisture vapor transport, uh, well, there's numerous reasons, but one of them is that a jacket that is more air permeable than a competing jacket is also going to transfer moisture better than that competing jacket. So we have some jackets that aren't air permeable at all, but they do have a moisture vapor transfer rate. But in, I have never seen the case where a jacket that has no air permeability is going to transfer moisture better than a jacket that is air permeable. Um, the air permeable jacket is going to win in both tests. Air permeability is a much easier test to conduct and it's easy to do a side-by-side -side comparison on a bubbler like this without getting super scientific. It's very visible in seeing which jacket uh, performs better in terms of air permeability, jacket A or jacket B, just based on how many bubbles it's letting through and how quickly those bubbles are coming through. The detractors will say well, an air permeable jacket isn't going to be as wind resistant, and that is absolutely not true. We did a uh, video on air permeability versus wind resistance, and the latest generation of membranes are three-dimensional in nature, so there's not a direct pathway for air to take through that membrane, so it, it uh, is wind resistant, yet still allows air to move through it when it's not moving at velocity, so air permeable and wind resistant. The other criticism I have or that I hear from customers is that uh, they don't want a jacket that's air permeable because it's not as warm and that is true and we've talked about that in previous videos. What happens with an air permeable jacket is the process of convection occurs where the hot air that's on the inside of that jacket being warmed by your body escapes through that jacket, hot air just moves away so they, they aren't as warm as a jacket that is not as air permeable. Sometimes you want that, sometimes you don't. If I'm uh, in the spring or summertime and I'm uh, participating in an activity that's highly aerobic, I want a more air permeable jacket. If I am in a very cold environment, uh, like downhill skiing, where I'm not working up, you know, it's not a highly aerobic activity because I'm riding a chairlift up and just skiing down, but the temperature is six degrees Fahrenheit, I may choose, and I do frequently choose, to go with a hard shell that is not air permeable just because it gives me that extra degree of warmth. Typically though, I like to think of my shells as protecting me from the environment in terms of water and wind, and my mid layer and my base layer serve the role of insulation to keep me warm. But that's not always the case. So uh, hopefully this cleared this up a little bit. Like I said, we're gonna use the word air permeability because it's a uh, more easy to understand concept, it's easy to demonstrate, and it is uh, more relevant in terms of giving you an indication of how that jacket is going to perform in the field. But I still make the mistake and uh, use the word breathability every once in a while because it's been drilled into my brain for the past 30 plus years by the marketing departments. Um, but if I ever use the word breathability, I'll usually try and catch myself and give you a more proper definition in terms of moisture vapor transport 
moisture vapor transport rate or air permeability. So I know this is a, a you know kind of a rambling video here, but if you have questions on this, please give us a call. Area code 406-582-0508 or send us an email to info at prolightgear.com. Thanks for watching.